For any guitarist who is familiar with some of the all-time best and influential guitar amps in history, there are a few that come to mind. I guess you could probably call them Tone Royalty, which I think that's where this amp gets its naming convention from. Introducing the brand new Tone King Royalist Mark III. <laughs> The Royalist is a British voiced amp created by Tone King that takes inspiration from some of the all time best low to mid gain amps that changed the landscape of guitar and rock music forever. Now in its third iteration, the brand new Mark III series adds a lot of features that makes this amp maybe the most ideal amp for anybody that's looking for those proper vintage British style tones. As always in our videos, we have split this up into chapters, so if there is a particular sound, or even if you just want to see, you know, hear those sounds, do check just below and skip to those, but let's just dive right in and check out some of the specs in the brand new Mark III. The Royalist Mark III is a full valve 40 watt 1x12 combo that has three 12 AX7A preamp tubes and two EL34 power amp tubes. Please say I got that right. Yes! <laughs> Along with those, it also has a 5AR4 valve reactor that gives you that sort of authentic sag feeling that you would expect from those vintage British style amps. As I mentioned, it comes in a 1x12 combo, which we are using today, but it is also available in a 40 watt head version along with a 1x12 cab or a 2x12 cab if you kind of prefer that more split up. All of those are loaded with custom Celestian 1660 12 inch speakers, which have been specifically voiced to kind of match up with this preamp and again, give you that super authentic old school tone. It also features some things that Tone King put on a lot of their amps now, which are absolutely perfect for any kind of modern guitarist, including a quarter inch line out in the back, which has got its own separate volume, and not just one, but two Iron Man 2 attenuators built in that kind of complement each channel, which we'll touch on just a little bit later in the video. Taking a look at the front of the amp, it does take inspiration again from those classic British style amps with, you know, no master volume control, and it is very, relatively easy to control. So starting from the right there, we've got our switch for each channel, which can also be changed via a foot switch. We've got volume A and volume B. Both of those can be pulled out as well to uh, put in the fat option, which will just kind of beef everything up a little bit. Treble, mid-range control and bass and presence shared across both channels there. The voicings, which you've got three of, and again, you'll hear kind of sound examples of each of those later in the video and they can be independently kind of assigned to either your A or B channel. Then you've also got your attenuator controls over here as well as an HF switch which we'll touch on again just a little bit later. So let's hear exactly what this amp has to offer. We're going to just go through each of the voicings here starting with voicing 1964. The 1964 is your lowest gain option from this amp, very much giving you a kind of old school blues breaker sort of JTM 45 sound.
Moving on to the second voicing, which is 1967, very much taking inspiration from kind of plexi style amps. So you're going to get a lot more attack and a bit more sort of bite from that. It's a really good step up if you do want just more of a kind of rhythm channel. And the last voice is 1970, very much taking inspiration from the super lead. So this is going to be the highest amount of gain that you'll get from the amp. Just think this is kind of your lead channel when you kick this on. But again, it does clean up rather well kind of when you reduce the volume a little bit too. So plenty of options within this amp to really kind of craft your tone. <laughs> As I mentioned previously, the Royalist comes equipped with two of Tone King's Iron Man 2 attenuators. Now, where they come in handy is obviously not just to reduce the actual volume of the amp while still being able to, you know, kind of drive it. With the Royalist being a non-master volume style amp, to get any sort of gain you would have heard in the voicings example, you do need to crank the volume of it. Now, it's it doesn't have the biggest jump in volume, but it's very audible that it will actually get louder. Of course you'll feel it more and there's nothing quite like you know cranking a valve amp. That is easier said than done because of course some situations you might not actually be able to you know push this to its loudest volume whether that be a smaller gig that you're playing, whether that be in your house or in the studio. It just a lot of situations these days maybe can't accommodate for that proper like blasting <laughs> valve sound. That's exactly where the Iron Man 2 attenuators come in because you'll have maybe noticed that throughout all these sound examples we have actually had it kicked in. You've got six steps that the amp can actually be reduced by. When you're at the zero option, just do the full right there of 
the knobs there, you're going to be getting, you know, uncompromised full volume. When you actually start to reduce that down, you can really start to crank the amp without it actually compromising any of the tone. But just volume wise, it's going to be much more manageable and we've got it today because I'm sitting so close to this. I don't want to absolutely blow my head off when we get those distorted tones kind of going. One of the important things obviously being feel with valve amps and certainly when you do crank that down and reduce the volume you still get that real like oomph and sort of mojo you would expect from a you know a fully cranked valve amp but again just at a much, much more manageable volume. The HF switch that I mentioned as well, it actually is to kind of tame your high frequencies also, and it will kind of cut a bit of those out, bring in a bit more mid-range. It just gives you a little bit more tonal flexibility, and especially if you've kind of cranked the attenuator down, that can really help with like letting some of those lows really shine through again. A lot of people say, that when you're reducing attenuator, that's what you're missing is that sort of low end and that rumble and again feel which people expect. Just giving you a lot more tonal flexibility and a lot more to be able to do with the sound that's in your head. I think the fact that they put two attenuators into this amp as well is a really, really smart idea, especially with it being a two channel amp, because what you can do is say, for example, channel A, you want to leave it on the 1964 channel. That's going to be your clean, you know, the most kind of headroom you're going to get. You can leave that sort of midway on on the attenuator there because again you're not going to need to crank the volume whereas if you are on the 1970 option that's going to be your most saturated you're going to want to turn the volume up on that if you do obviously want to distort a tone which again you can just sort of accommodate for that so you can get them absolutely perfectly balanced so that sound guys up and down the country are shaking their fist at you for when there's a huge <laughs> jump in your distorted tone. So obviously we've heard the amp and we know exactly what inspiration it's drawing from and certainly it's no stranger to that sort of classic rock sphere but certainly looking kind of a bit into who this is for or if you're into your classic rock, into your old school British sort of tones, this is an absolute no brainer. I think for anybody who's maybe even just looking for more of an old school amp, a really good pedal platform, it's absolutely ideal for that. Now, you're not gonna be getting any modern metal tones right out the box for this. You can maybe use some pedals as assistance for that, but very much I think if you're going for a kind of you know, rock to hard rock, it's going to be absolutely perfect for that. Touching on the cleans as well, you know, it can't be overstated that this is a really, really flexible amp. So if you are looking just for a really nice clean tone out of this, especially on both channels, you know, you can have completely sort of different levels, maybe one on edge of breakup, one super, super, you know, clean headroom there. It's really, really nice. And certainly if you put single coils into this, I don't think it's going to, it's not going to sound crazy you know it's you're going to get exactly just this full bodied like classic british tone which i think a lot of people really love and hell i think even with the right eq you can take this to your jazz gig and it'll sound absolutely superb too but what do you think is the tone king the new royal a and the top of the line when it comes to british tones let us know down in the comments and of course while you're there give us a like give us a subscribe i've heard through the funny youtube algorithm that that will actually help the channel so do that and see if it works. And for every like on this video, I'll crown your favorite amp the new king or queen of amplifiers. But until then, I've been Kieran. This is the Tone King Royalist Mark III. Have a great day.